Enemy behavior in game development can be a really tricky topic. It's difficult enough to come up with cool monster designs and deciding what kind of attacks they'll use, but where it really gets hard is adding any sort of intelligence to the way they interact with the player and the world around them. Setting up the basics of enemies is pretty straightforward. You give it some animations, a hitbox, some health, and as long as it can be hit by the player's attacks, it sort of feels like we're already most of the way there. But enemies aren't just punching bags. They need some sort of behavior that challenges the player in some way. My enemy code was really old and difficult to work with at this point, so I decided to start over entirely from scratch. To kick things off, I gave the enemies two basic states, idle and pursuing. When idle, if the player gets too close, it'll begin pursuing, where the animation changes and it starts moving towards the player. Using vectors, it's really easy to set the enemy's movement direction to always angle towards the player, and even though it's simple, moving towards the player is ultimately the goal of a lot of enemies, so this is a great starting point. However, it immediately becomes more complicated when we add some obstacles to the environment. Suddenly, the logic of simply moving in the direction of the player isn't so reliable. Depending on how it's coded, they'll either get stuck or just ignore the obstacles altogether. Another problem is with the idle state. If we're only checking a distance radius, that means the obstacles are completely ignored and the enemies can essentially see through walls. To fix both of these problems, I added Line of Sight, or LOS. This represents the line between two points, and in my code, LOS true means we do have line of sight, and LOS false means we don't. The way I check for line of sight is by calculating the line between the enemy and the player, and then iteratively doing a small circular query for any obstacles along that line. If it reaches the player, LOS is true. Now, if we're within the search distance radius, the enemy is also going to be doing line of sight checks before attacking. So since there's a wall in the way, LOS is false and the enemy won't attack. As soon as that wall isn't in the way though, the enemy will see us and pursue. This same sort of logic can be applied to this pursuing state to prevent the earlier issues of getting stuck and phasing through walls. If LOS is false at any point while pursuing, we can just go back to the idle state and there's no risk of causing any problems. But obviously this isn't a great solution. If you're being chased by an enemy and you walk around a corner, even though line of sight is lost, ideally the enemy would still have some understanding of where the player might be and what direction they should go in order to find them. Solving this is tricky because what this means is that instead of always going in the direction of the player, which is easy to calculate, we need to find some new direction to go. Since this needs to work for any level layout, there's a lot to keep in mind when coming up with a solution. When the enemy doesn't have LOS, what is the best way to reach the player, and how do you calculate this direction? The answer is very simple. I'm just kidding, it's actually not simple at all. I'm going to describe the solution I came up with, but I know that there's probably better ways to do it, so leave a comment if you have any suggestions for me to try out. And while you're at it, check out the new update for my seasonally relevant game, Necrozone, on iOS and the Google Play Store. It's free, no ads, no in-app purchases, there is no money being made here. But if you enjoy my games and content, liking the video helps out a ton, and I really appreciate the support. With all that in mind, I wanted to show off my tile tracking solution. The enemies are trying to find some path to reach the player, and to help with this, all of the tiles around the player are performing their own line of sight checks to see if those destinations would be viable for reaching the player. The colors represent the LOS status, and you can see how it changes as I walk around corners and obstacles. With this tile data available, this helps the enemy out a ton. If line of sight with the player is lost, the enemy can instead try looking at the nearby tile data. If there are some tiles that have line of sight with the player, those might be good options to go towards. Specifically though, the enemy needs to figure out which tiles have line of sight with both the player and the enemy. And if any tile like that exists, that gives the enemy a clear and unobstructed path to reach the player. One really important note is that the tiles frequently need to recalculate their data, at least when the player is aggroed by an enemy, because the player is always on the move. If the tiles are no longer close enough to the player or lose LOS, the enemy might run out of options, and in that case, once it reaches the last destination it calculated, the enemy will just give up and go back to its idle logic. Speaking of which, I applied the same tile line of sight logic to the enemy's idle state to let it wander around. It has a home point, a list of tiles that have line of sight with that home point, and it patrols between those tiles. 
To give it more space, it's actually able to branch out to any point that has LOS with any of the home LOS tile list. So there's definitely a lot of overlap between the idle and pursuing states with this concept. But after all of this logic takes place, the enemy finally gets close enough and has line of sight with the player, it can attack. This part is much easier since there's no pathfinding involved. It can do a quick tackle at the player, have projectiles, weapons, different movement patterns. It'll be fun getting creative here. And thanks to this rework, creating new enemies is much easier. This improves my development process, but it also makes community mod support possible. I'll be talking about this a bit more in the next video. Thank you for watching!